Hello, I'm Harold Johnson, and I'm the moderator for this video series of seven Kit Power Strategies to Keep Your Child Safe. This video presents Kit Power Strategy number five, Don't Let Kids Throw Stones, and it's going to share with you information about bullying. Uh, please note that over 50% of kids with disabilities will themselves experience bullying. And please note that over 90% of the kids will see someone being bullied. It's critical that we know what to do when this occurs. Irene, thank you for being with us today. And please share with us more information from Kid Power on how we can help our kids as they may experience bullying. Every adult in charge of children is responsible for making sure that these children are treated with safety and respect and that they act safely and respectfully towards others. If we were to stop unsafe, disrespectful behavior with the same determination that we would stop a child from throwing a rock through a window, then this behavior would happen much less often. We want to prevent children from bullying themselves, from acting unkindly, unsafely, disrespectfully towards other kids or adults. And we want to teach kids skills who are being bullied so that they can protect themselves. What we have found is that it's very important how we intervene. If we ignore the behavior and just walk by, we're sending a very um, hopeless and negative message to children. If we intervene in a way that's angry and disrespectful and uh, shaming, then we are showing them a very poor model for how to solve problems. So it's very important within ourselves that we stay calm, that we understand that just because a child may have very destructive behavior, that does not mean that child is inherently evil. We want to intervene in a way that models how to solve problems in a way that's safe, persistent, respectful, and effective. We have found that having a few things to say that, uh, and, and it's very easy when you didn't see what happened to end up with a he said, he said, or she said, she said situation. So instead, what you can do is say something unsafe happened, or that seemed unkind, or that sounded disrespectful. And then what you can do is have kids practice the skills that help them to make safer and wiser choices on both ends of the bullying spectrum, actually on all three ends. If you witness bullying, then you can speak up. And we have kids practice, uh, for example, in inclusion in a game saying, uh, the rule at school is everyone gets to play. Or give her a chance. She'll get better if she practices. Uh, we, we come up with a whole bunch of ways that kids... Uh, leave each other out, and a whole bunch of ways to persist. We teach the child who's being bullied to say, that did not sound respectful, please stop, or that was a hurtful thing to say, please don't talk like that. Um, and we teach uh, the child who is acting in, in a way that is harmful or hurtful to stop and think, to stay in charge of what he or she says or does, no matter how uh, he or she feels inside. We teach kids who have trouble <clears throat> to find other more positive ways of using their power and other more powerful ways of um, and more positive ways of acting as leaders. We teach kids who act in unsafe or disrespectful ways to stop and think, stay in charge of their with, of acting safely and respectfully with their bodies and their words, no matter how they feel inside, wait, accept disappointment, uh, find uh, other outlets for their to use their power in positive ways and to get attention. We can practice um, by rewinding the situation. If, if both kids were involved in, say, name-calling, 
then we can, the adult can come in and instead of trying to figure out who started it, we can say, name calling happened. It's against our rules here. So we're all going to practice mouth closed power, hands down power. Uh, we're all going to practice walk away power. This is walk away power to leave. Those are like legs. Or if somebody uses a wheelchair, it's like this roll away power. We're all going to practice getting help. So that, uh, and saying, I need help. We're having a safety problem. So or we're having trouble getting along. So that by practicing, it's not a horrible consequence. It's a management tool. And it gives ch ch children, even if they say, oh, I already know how to do that. We say, well, you may know with your head, but you're showing that you don't know how to do it with your body. We also teach kids how to protect themselves from hurting words by imagining throwing those words into a trash can and or protecting themselves with an emotional screen. Uh, we have a whole variety of emotional safety techniques. And these are all ways, and calm down power. Squeeze your hands together, straighten your back, take a breath. And calm down. So we give kids tools to manage their feelings and their behavior. And so that we're stepping in with solutions and not with blame. Thank you, Irene. As you were talking, I was reminded of the fact that not only do a lot of our kids experience bullying, but a lot of our kids also have some social skill development yet to do. And that sometimes their behavior may be misinterpreted as being intentionally as, as if they were bullying. Um, so they, they can learn not only in terms of what to do if they experience bullying, but also they can learn how to be more effective in talking and interacting with other kids. So thank you for that. I would encourage you to watch the remaining Kid Power Safety Strategies. Uh, please note that the safety of our children depends on you.